Hi, I'm Natasha, and in this video, we're looking at every PTE speaking task. So, I'll briefly explain them to you, give you the opportunity to practice, then I'll provide you with model answers. Let's get straight into it. So, here are all the PTE speaking tasks. Read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image, retell lecture, and answer short question. Okay, let's start with read aloud, the first PTE speaking task. Here it is. You have 35 seconds to prepare to read the paragraph of text aloud, and then you'll have another 35 seconds to read aloud as clearly and as naturally as you can. When I say clearly, focus on crystal clear pronunciation. And when I say naturally, focus on the rhythm of your voice. Ready? You try it and then I'll show you a model answer. Ready? Prepare, then speak. How'd you go? Remember that you need to really focus on your clarity and rhythm. This is key. Let's now listen to a high scoring sample answer. Dictionaries are a wonderful guide and resource, but there is no objective dictionary authority out there that is the final arbiter about what words mean. If a community of speakers is using a word and knows what it means, it's real. This is how you're scored in read aloud. Content means you didn't misread, add, or skip any words. Oral fluency basically means you read smoothly but with lots of rhythm. And pronunciation is all about clarity. Reflect on your own performance. How do you think you did? How can you improve? Ready for another one? This time, you have 40 seconds to prepare. When the timer restarts, Read with rhythm and clarity. Ready? Prepare, then speak. So, how do you think you went against the scoring criteria? Content, pronunciation, and oral fluency. Let's now listen to another sample answer. New research shows there might be health benefits to eating certain types of dark chocolate. 
Findings from two studies recently presented at the Experimental Biology 2018 Annual Meeting in San Diego show that consuming dark chocolate with a high concentration of cacao, minimally 70% cacao, 30% organic cane sugar, has positive effects on stress levels, inflammation, mood, memory, and immunity. That was a tricky text, especially the pausing. Getting the pausing right was key to reading this well. Keep in mind that E2 offers feedback on your speaking or even one-on-one -on -one tutorials if you need additional help. Sign up for free at e2testprep.com. All right, let's practice repeat sentence. Here, you need to listen intently to the sentence. It'll have two or three main phrases. Then, once you've understood the sentence, repeat it back exactly as it was said. In repeat sentence, you also need to focus on clarity and rhythm as well. Don't just repeat the sentence, say the sentence with meaning. Ready? Listen, then speak. So we have taught a machine to see with the eyes of a coach. How did you go? Did you get it? The answer was, so we have taught a machine to see with the eyes of a coach. Let's do another one. Ready? Listen, then speak. People who speak different languages will pay attention to different things. The answer is, people who speak different languages will pay attention to different things. And one more for good measure. Ready? Listen, then speak. Our financial markets are based on mathematical models. The answer is, our financial markets are based on mathematical models. How did you go? How many words did you skip or misinterpret? Or did you get them all? Remember, you're scored on content. That is, you need to say all the words correctly in the correct sequence. Oral fluency, which means speaking smoothly and with rhythm. And pronunciation which means you say the words clearly. All right, let's do describe image. Before we attempt the describe image questions, I have a question for you. Do you know our E2 method? If not, here is a quick explanation. Remember to introduce the image. This image represents, and then read the title, then describe the most obvious aspects of the image, and then conclude with a sentence like, overall, try to finish without rushing before the 40 seconds is up. To learn more about our E2 methods, head to e2testprep.com and sign up for free to access exclusive videos, practice questions, assessments, and much more. Okay, here is the question. You have 25 seconds to prepare and then 40 seconds to speak. Ready? Prepare, then speak.
How'd you go? Now, let's listen to a sample answer. Pay attention to the content, oral fluency, and pronunciation of the speaker. These are pretty much perfect examples. This line graph shows changes in fuel consumption in the US from 1960 to 2015. From 1960 until 1975, fuel consumption remained constant as a proportion of miles traveled. However, after that period, miles traveled began to diverge and increased at a faster rate than fuel consumption. From 2000, gains in fuel consumption efficiency began to level off. Overall, both miles traveled and fuel consumption rose throughout the period, but by 2015, people were traveling more miles and using less fuel to do it. Okay, let's do another one. Remember not to get lost in detail. Just describe the most obvious parts of what you see and use the E2 method. Again, 25 seconds to prepare and 40 seconds to speak. Ready? Prepare, then speak. How was that one? Did you find it easier or harder? Let's listen to a sample answer. This image displays major US goods exported to Australia and Australian goods exported to the US in 2017. The biggest category for each country was other, but apart from that, the largest export from the US was machinery valued at $5.5 billion, while the largest Australian export was meat valued at $1.5 billion. The lowest exports into Australia were agricultural products and the lowest into the US were precious stones and metals. In conclusion, it can be seen that the US trade into Australia has a much higher value than the trade in the other direction. Not bad at all. And let's do one more for good measure. The more practice now, the better your score will be on test day. So here is the final describe image task. Ready, prepare, then speak. All right, how do you think you went? Just like read aloud and repeat sentence, you're scored on content, pronunciation, and oral fluency. One of the keys to describe image is to keep it simple and focus on your delivery. Let's listen to the final sample answer. This bar chart shows average feed barley prices in three time periods between 2007 and 2013. The highest prices were in 2007, while the lowest prices were in 2009. 
Of the three time periods, prices were consistently highest in July to October each year and were generally, but not consistently, lowest in November to December. From 2010 to 2013, prices fluctuated in a narrow range. In conclusion, it can be seen that the best prices for producers, but the worst prices for purchasers, were in the July to October period annually. So here is how you are scored for described image. If possible, give yourself a score out of five for content for each of the images you just described. Content means that you introduce the image, describe the key features, maybe the highest and lowest points, or some other obvious part, and then you concluded your description with a single sentence. Oral fluency means that you didn't get flustered, you didn't hesitate too much, you spoke smoothly and with rhythm. And pronunciation means you focused on clarity and didn't mumble. All right, let's do some retail lecture practice. Get ready to take notes as you listen to the lecture, so you'll need a pen and paper. Again, remember to use the E2 method. Just to remind you, it's the speaker was discussing, he or she mentioned, talked about, discussed, finally, it's a simple but powerful structure and will keep you on track. Take a look at the picture, listen and take notes, and then retell the lecture in your own words in under 40 seconds. Ready? Listen, prepare, then speak. I come from Costa Rica, a developing country. We are nearly 5 million people and nearly 100% of our electricity comes from renewable sources five of them, hydropower, geothermal, wind, solar, biomass. Did you know that last year, for 299 days, we did not use any fossil fuels in order to generate our electricity? It's a fantastic achievement, and yet it hides a paradox, which is that nearly 70% of our energy consumption is oil. Why? Because of our transportation system, which is totally dependent on fossil fuels, like it is in most countries. So if we think of the energy transition as a marathon, the question is, how do we get to the finishing line? How do we decarbonize the rest of the economy? And it's fair to say that if we don't succeed, it's difficult to see who will. So that is why I want to talk to you about Costa Rica, because I believe we are great candidates in pioneering a vision for development without fossil fuels. How did you go? Remember to always keep content, oral fluency, and pronunciation in mind as you do any PTE speaking task. This is how you're scored. If content becomes a concern, like you miss part of the lecture or you don't understand it properly, don't worry. Fake it. Really concentrate on your rhythm and your clarity. They are key. Here's a sample answer. You can see the transcript as well if you want to pause and read. Listen carefully to the way the speaker retells the lecture. Also, pay attention to the E2 structure that is embedded in this answer as well. The speaker was discussing renewable energy. She mentioned that Costa Rica's electricity is almost 100% generated by renewables. Then she talked about how the country had gone 299 days without fossil fuels. Next, she described how this hid a paradox, which was that nearly 70% of all the country's energy consumption is actually oil and this is due to transportation. She discussed that transport is totally dependent on fossil fuel. 
Finally, she suggested that Costa Rica should pioneer a model for development based solely on renewables. Let's do one more. Look at the image, listen and take notes, take a deep breath and then retell the lecture using the E2 structure. Ready? Listen, prepare, then speak. New Orleans. It was a great place to grow up, but it's one of the most vulnerable spots in the world. Half the city is already below sea level. In 2005, the world watched as New Orleans and the Gulf Coast were devastated by Hurricane Katrina. 1,836 people died. Nearly 300,000 homes were lost. Other parts of the world have been hit by storms in even more devastating ways. In 2008, Cyclone Nargis and its aftermath killed 138,000 in Myanmar. Climate change is affecting our homes, our communities, our way of life. We should be preparing at every scale and every opportunity. The changes in these times won't affect us all equally. There are important distributional consequences, and they're not what you always might think. In New Orleans, the elderly and female-headed households were among the most vulnerable. For those in vulnerable, low-lying nations, how do you put a dollar value on losing your country where your ancestors are buried? And where will your people go? And how will they cope in a foreign land? Will there be tensions over immigration or conflicts over competition for limited resources? It's already fueled conflicts in Chad and Darfur. Like it or not, this is our future. Okay, how did you do? Let's listen to a sample answer. Here's the transcript if you want to pause and check your notes against what was said. Let's listen to the sample answer. The speaker was discussing climate change. She mentioned that half of New Orleans is below sea level. Then she talked about the devastation caused by Cyclone Katrina and by a 2008 cyclone in Myanmar. Next, she described how climate change is affecting our way of life but that we won't all be affected equally. She discussed the vulnerability of low-lying nations and the problem of putting a dollar value on loss of country. Finally, she suggested that we can expect conflict in future over immigration and over limited resources. Okay, so let's take a close look at how you're scored for retell lecture. So for scoring, again, it's content, oral fluency, and pronunciation, the three keys to a high PTE speaking score. So reflect on your own performance. How did you do? How was your content, pronunciation, and oral fluency? Which aspect or aspects do you need to work on? All right, let's keep going and finish with answer short question. We'll answer two questions. All you need to do is simply listen carefully and answer the question in a word or short phrase. Ready? Listen, then speak. When two people get married, the wife is called the bride. What is the husband called? Okay, did you get it? The question was, when two people get married, the wife is called the bride, what is the husband called? And the answer is groom or the groom. With or without the article the is fine. Both are acceptable. Let's do another one. Ready? Listen, then speak. The word fridge 
is a common abbreviation of which longer word? How did you find that question? Was it easy or challenging? Let us know in the comments below. So, the question was, the word fridge is a common abbreviation of which longer word? And the answer is refrigerator. Refrigerator is the longer word. If you're unhappy with your speaking performance, what do you think it might have been? What's holding you back? What do you need to work on? Is it listening? Or vocab? Or a lack of general knowledge? Or is it your pronunciation? Remember to sign up for free at e2testprep.com for more PTE practice questions, methods videos, assessments, and much more. Just keep going. You'll get there. Good luck on your upcoming test.